Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we'll be going over a fantastic Void Apotheos Vel build designed for doing heavy DPS within a short time frame we have available. With the new dungeon available, many players will want a good DPS and survivalist build that will aid them from start to finish, and the following is perfect for those occasions. With this, you can hit high damage numbers within a few seconds upon activating your super and your abilities. Having constant devour on hand, great at clearing with one of the best PvE exotic pulses in game, and room to expand your mod slots for even more damage if you wish. We have covered Strand and Solar, so now is the time to cover Void and see what it can offer us next. For Aspects, you're going to want to have Chaos Accelerant, where your grenades can be overcharged for a different effect. And then you want Feed the Void, where getting the ability kill will grant you Devour. These are the two aspects you must stick with since Child of the Old Gods don't fit the playstyle the build is going for this time round. Although we do lose a great AoE debuff effect, this can be easily covered by our grenades and choose an Echo of Undermining for our larger damage radius, suitable for the build that we are going for. The fragments used are Echo Remnant where lingering grenade durations are increased, Echo Explosion where Void Ability Final Blows cause targets to explode, Echo Instability, where getting a kill grants Void Weapon and Volatile Rounds, and Echo Persistence, where a Void Burst applied to you are increased. As the build focuses heavily on the uses of grenades and health regen in the long run, it's going to be absolutely required by the players to have Echo Remnant and Persistence on hand. A longer lasting Vortex Grenades means we can apply more damage to enemies for a longer duration, while longer lasting Devour will not only regen our health for X amount of time, they will also trigger Feed the Void secondary effect of granting us great energy as well. Having these two will set the build up into the right direction, while Echo of Explosion and Instability are more of a personal choice to help further improve or add clearing capabilities. So for the mods and stats, you'll want to invest solely into Discipline as the main stat focus. After that, investing into Resilience and Strength is then also recommended. Your Discipline should be at Tier 10, and will grant you a 1 minute 16 second grenade cooldown while using your Vortex Grenade, which is still high, but feasible to work with. While including Feed the Void secondary effect, we do have Grenade Kickstart that will grant us a 34.4% grenade energy boost when we have 4 stacks of armor charges available. But as we have an extra charged up mod available, this will push our armor charges to 5 for an overall 38.4% boost instead. We then have Impact Induction that will grant us a further 20% via melee hits. Innovation will grant us a 10% boost upon Orbs Pickup. Bomber Mod for a 12% Grenade Boost. And Distribution Mod for a 4% boost. This will overall allow our users of Vortex Grenades to not slow down and stagnate to one combat. And once you do activate your Exotic Effect, this will also help with boosting the following numbers as well. A resilient stat, we have ours at tier 8 for a 24% damage reduction, which is suitable for endgame since we also have Devour on hand to help replenish and reduce the lost health. A strength at tier 7 will grant us a 1 minute 5 second for pocket singularity melee hit. It's not a great melee to use since it will do damage, but it's more designed for pushing targets back and then finishing with whatever you have in mind. This means its uses against bosses are limited and should be avoided around these areas where your weapons, super and grenades will be a lot more impactful. We can have both impact induction and momentum transfer tied together since fighting minor red bar enemies will still be impactful towards the progression of the build. Now, for this next section, we'll be focusing on the armor charges and additional optional mods applied. Charged up times 2 will expand how many charges we can carry once we collect an orbital power. After that, having the Harmonic Siphon mod and Reaper mod will further help with creating orbs at a faster rate. All of this will be built into the super progression rate as it will be important to have the assets to assets mod to help accelerate this given progress. Lastly, having the Heavy Ammo Finder and Reserves mod will help with allowing us to do longer DPS angles when beginning or continuing a boss fight. For weapons, we have Graviton Dance for its capabilities of being a great ad clearing weapon when needed. Since the new activity has waves of enemies that respawn one after another, you'll want a weapon that is great for clearing up enemies fast, while also giving us a chain reaction like effect. The following is great with keeping the player's goals in mind, and when combined with Devour and Echo Instability for example, 
the weapon becomes insanely effective with leveling the playing field. I wholeheartedly recommend you keep and use the following as it's too good to miss up on. And next comes the heavy, which is the Braytech Osprey Adept with Bipod and Auto Loan Holster. Although Bipod reduces our weapon impact damage by quite a bit, it does still provide an overall high DPS when operated correctly within certain builds. Two rockets that auto reload on a build designed for a high end quick DPS is definitely a worthy match that players should keep in mind, and do recommend you try and follow the same route as shown. Although getting a depth version does require Grandmaster Completion when available, I would say any rocket launcher with auto loading is just fine, as this is the main perk we actually need when playing with the Pacific build. We have covered Apotheos Veil for Strand and Solar now, so it's best to compare the build to our Strand version we did a while back. Both the Strand and Void's versions share a similar setup for how they operate within a boss environment, as both of them have fast to activate supers that deal high damage, both had good grenade options that could be enhanced for more damage along the way, and both offer some sort of debuff to make the target weaker or easier for us. This makes both the build versatile and very effective for users in Grandmasters and Dungeons to where you need big DPS in a small instance. Within the following Void version of Apotheos, we have created a setup that makes full use of our Vortex grenades to inflict high damage in groups, but also grant us devour for a long lasting survivalist build. Now I don't tend to use Vortex grenades in most of my builds, unless I have a perk or fragment available that will increase my grenade regen quite fast. However, we can get away with not needing the following additions, since our stats and mod will help us here, but also the Feed the Void aspect will grant us additional grenade energy while Devourer is active. Now, combining the strength of Vortex grenades with Apotheos Veil 8 second and limited ability spam, it means that we can cover our boss with around 4 to 5 long duration grenades all at once, along with our super to kickstart the effect, and shockingly, the damage is really quite good. I'm not using the Echo of Undermine for the debuff we can apply to targets for personal reasonings, but you can add that in as well to increase your damage further. But honestly, the build feels like it doesn't need anything more than what's currently shown. We have good super damage, good grenade damage, good autoloading weapon damage, and simple DPS build that does a lot and requires little by the user. Although the exotic has no passive ability for us to lean on like most other exotics, the fragments of mods we have available is enough to keep the build alive long enough until you need to activate said super. On top of that, having devour on the hand extends the viability of the build for hard content like mentioned earlier. So if you want to do a, say, solo dungeon, for example, with a good DPS and survival build, then the following should cover that area quite easily. So the overall conclusion of the build is that if you like the Strand version, then you're gonna love the Void version, except for this one has a bit more ways to survive for longer. It's not amazing against mobile targets compared to how Strand deals with them if you're using your grenades a lot, but since our AoE effect is quite large, and you're going to be leaving an impact one way or another, it does do quite fairly well against most mobile targets. I do recommend you give this build a try if you want to expand your Apotheos Veil collection, as the next video now should be focusing on either Stasis, Arc, and then hopefully we do some endgame versions as well, so you can get a bit more flexibility when Grandmasters come round. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. But at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.